done. What is Jesus saying? On, Jesus saying, Peter, the reason why you know what you know about me is not because some man told you about me. The man didn't know who he was, but certainly the Father, which is in heaven, knew who he was. As a matter of fact, he was the one who sent him in the first place. And so if anybody could tell you who Jesus was, it was the Father who sent him in the first place. And when the Father revealed that fact unto Peter, then Peter could tell you plainly and undisputably who Jesus was. And that's the same thing we're saying today. If you want to know which church is Jesus' church, you've got to have a revelation from the Father. You can't look at no man with his collar turned around backwards. Who's telling you what you want to hear? You need to hear what God says you need to hear. If you're going to know if you're going to really know where to go, you got to have a revelation from God. And we got a revelation from God. It ain't no new revelation. It's one that God signed, sealed, and delivered a long time ago. 66 books in this one book reveals unto us that Jesus indicate in this very chapter, in verse number 18, saying, and I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Sometimes I just marvel at the fact that folk can read it in red. And we learned a long time ago that when you see it in red, that means Jesus was talking we can see when Jesus was talking. They can look at the fact that Jesus said, I will build my church. And when it comes to people looking for a church, why don't it cross their minds to look for the one that Jesus built? If Jesus said he was going to build one, we know God don't make promises that he will not keep. And so if Jesus said, I'm going to build one, if I'm looking for a church, I need to be looking for Jesus' church. But folks have said, go join hmm, the church of your choice. So folks look for what they want in a church rather than what's been revealed unto us in God's word Amen. that we ought to see in a church. Amen. Notice the Bible indicates that the church that Jesus built is also called his body. Yes. Ephesians chapter 1 and beginning at verse number 22. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 1 and beginning at verse number 22. Bible says and hath all things under his feet gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body yes, sir. the church is also the body of Christ Amen. Colossians chapter 1 and beginning at verse number 17 once more and again the Bible explains unto us that the body and the church are one in the same Amen. Colossians chapter 1 and beginning at verse number 17, the Bible says, And he, speaking of Jesus Christ, is before all things, and by him all things consist. Yeah. And he, Jesus, is the head of the body, the church. The same Bible that indicates that Jesus is the head of the church is the same Bible that indicates that Jesus is the head of the body. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5 and beginning at verse number 23. Ephesians chapter 5 and beginning at verse number 23. The Bible says for the husband is the head of the wife even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. We're talking about about one body and if the church and the body are the same if there's not but one body then there can't be but one church Ephesians chapter 4 and beginning at verse number 4 Ephesians chapter 4 and beginning at verse number 4 the Bible explains unto us plainly that there is one body and one spirit even as ye are called in one whole of your calling drop down to verse number 12 the Bible says for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body 
of Christ. If the body is the same as the church, when the Bible talks about the body of Christ, it's also talking about the church of Christ. In Romans chapter 16 and verse number 16, in Romans chapter 16 and verse number 16, Paul pins some words here that we would all do well to take heed to when he said salute one another with a holy kiss and the churches of Christ salute you. That's the only church that you will find in the Bible. The body of Christ is the same as the church of Christ. The church of Christ is the same as the body of Christ. And because Jesus is the head of the body that also means he's the head of the church. And so just like in Jerusalem just like Jerusalem was the only place that God would allow his folk to worship up under the Old Testament. The church of Christ is the only place that God will allow his people to worship in up under the New Testament. Will somebody ask the question because they don't like that kind of talking. They say you can't just be so exclusive preacher. That's a little bit too narrow for my understanding. How can a God as big as our God be so narrow in his vision to say that all of us got to be in the same place. It's a good thing you didn't live during the time that Noah was living because you would have been out there in the water rather than being in the ark. I saw my God during the days of Noah tell Noah don't build but one ark that was the saving of his household and if God could save eight folk during the time when the world was populated an estimation of maybe 2.8 billion people some scholars and theologians have surmised that when you add up the number of years that folk were living and the fact that they could have babies all the way up into their 900s, yeah. they surmise, they speculate that it was an estimated population of 2.8 million people that inhabited the earth during the time that that Noah built that ark. And yet, if there was, in fact, a population of 2.8 million people, the Bible is clear when it says that God didn't say but eight because God ain't impressed with numbers. God is more interested in you doing what he said do the way he said do it rather than worry about what everybody else is doing. It's a good thing they, did, they weren't living during the time when God had Moses erect the tabernacle because we didn't see a tabernacle for Moses. We didn't see a tabernacle for Aaron. We didn't see a tabernacle for Joshua. We didn't see a tabernacle for Samuel. We didn't see a tabernacle for Samson. We didn't see a tabernacle for King Saul, David, and Solomon. Because when God gave Moses the instruction for the tabernacle, which was nothing more than a place of worship, he couldn't make but one tabernacle. And he had to put it up and put it down and move it to the next location. It wasn't no sense of saying, Lord, ain't no sense just pulling it up and taking it back down. Now, why don't we just make us a couple of these and then we can situate them along the way. God would have it now. We get one tabernacle because God is a God who's always dealt in oneness. And then you can see the theme of oneness coming from the Old Testament. How come you had a problem with oneness when you get up under the New Testament? And so there are some folk that will challenge that way of thinking by saying God is too big to want all of his folk in one place. But the Bible is clear even in Acts chapter 2. The Bible is clear that the Lord don't have but one church. Upon the day of Pentecost there was some folk who were being saved and the Bible indicated unto us that God was adding the same folk to his church. In Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47, the Bible says they were praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church. The Lord was adding to no churches. The Lord was adding to the church. 
daily those who are being saved. That one but one church on the day of Pentecost. And if that was good enough for God, it ought to be good enough for us. God ain't had but one church. He ain't coming back for but one church in Ephesians.